Welcome to Accounting with Audra and the third in a series on foreign tax credits. In this episode, we'll continue to discuss sourcing rules for gross income items with a focus on passive type income, including dividends, interest, rents, and royalties. As a quick recap, looking back on what I like to consider the six components of the foreign tax credit, we're still discussing item three, determining what foreign source income is reported on your annual tax return and source that income by basket. In video two in this series, I explain how gross services and sales income are sourced. In this video, I'm gonna continue on with additional sources of income. Dividends are generally sourced on residents of the payer. In other words, if a US company owns stock in a foreign corporation that pays a dividend during the year, and the corporation is incorporated in France, the dividend would be sourced foreign. There are a few exceptions to the extent the underlying operations of the entity paying the dividend are not actually foreign in nature, but instead related to U.S. items of income. In other words, the payer's earnings are considered may be effectively connected with a U.S. trader business, come from a U.S. branch, or some other U.S. source. Let's walk through a simple example. I have a U.S. shareholder that owns 100% of foreign company A organized in Belgium. Foreign company A pays a dividend of $100 to U.S. shareholder. The dividend is foreign source. Let's assume U.S. shareholder also owns 100% of U.S. sub B, and U.S. sub B pays a $50 dividend during the year. The dividend in this case would be U.S. source. However, let's also then say foreign co A has a U.S. branch. In this instance, the dividend for foreign company A would actually be partially sourced U.S. and partially sourced based on the foreign branch and the underlying activities of that entity. When sourcing dividends, it is important to also include deemed dividends. For example, deemed dividends are things like IRC Section 951, Subpart F Income, and their corresponding Section 78 gross-ups for taxes. I discuss these in another series of videos. Guilty inclusions under 951 Cap A, and PFIC inclusions. They're all considered dividends for purposes of sourcing under the code. However, since these provisions relate to foreign corporations, they're generally sourced as foreign source income. Interest income recorded on the U.S. tax return is sourced based on the residence of the payer of the interest. To the extent a U.S. company lends to a foreign person or corporation, the interest received on those loans or bonds or other obligations would be considered foreign source. Remember that we again are using our U.S. tax return as a base. So if there's interest not necessarily recorded on the books under U.S. GAAP, but maybe imputed under 482, or if there's items that are similar to interest like discounts, those would also be sourced based on resident of the one obliged to pay. There's also an exception. 904H has some um, that keep companies from trying to abuse this and um, create foreign source income by simply dropping a U.S. business into a foreign sub. Um, one other item I want to note is many accounting departments tend to net intercompany interest for financial statement reporting purposes uh, because it doesn't matter from a financial statement perspective, but you need to make sure that what you're receiving to do this analysis is gross as the rules for sourcing interest income are very different from what the rules are for sourcing interest expense, which we will get to in a later video. Next, we're going to look at royalties, which are sourced based on place of use. So let's assume I have a U.S. company. That U.S. company has IP in the U.S., intellectual property. Uh, maybe it's associated with a brand name or some sort of know-how. And my U.S. company in this instance owns 100% of foreign company A organized in Brazil. Foreign company A pays a royalty back to the U.S. annually for the right to use the company brand in Brazil. Since the IP is being used in Brazil, the payment to the U.S. is considered foreign source. Likewise, if U.S. has a sub and that sub is also paying royalties back to the U.S., um, because the IP is being used in the U.S., then it is considered U.S. source income. Same if it was a royalty being received from third parties. It does not necessarily need to be inner company for purposes of the sourcing rules. Similar to royalties, rents also uses a place of use. So again, let's assume I have a U.S. company and that U.S. company has a hotel located in Washington, D.C. And U.S. company is in the business of collecting rents on that hotel. That rental income, in our case, maybe it's $2,000, would be considered U.S. source. Earned by U.S. company, 
hotel sits in the U.S., so rent's collected in the U.S. But if my U.S. company all of a sudden also has a hotel, maybe it's located in Canada, and it also receives rental income from that Canadian hotel on its U.S. tax return, then that rental income would actually be sourced foreign because the hotel that's being rented is being used in a foreign jurisdiction. Let's go ahead and recap sourcing rules for all the various types of income we've discussed over the last two videos. So we've got real property, which is based on the physical location of the property and personal property looking to the residence of the seller. We have inventory, which we have to answer two questions to source, where the inventory was manufactured, if we are the manufacturer, um, as well as title passage on the sale of that inventory. Services, we look to the place of the performance of the services. Dividends, um, we look to the residence of the payer, and of course this also includes deemed dividends. Interest is based on residence of payer and rents and royalties based on place of use. So we so far have talked about how income has been sourced. What I'll talk about in the next video is how we then take our income that we've sourced US and foreign and look to the foreign items and actually basket them. So when we're doing our foreign tax credit calculation, going back to video one in our high level summary, what we have to do is determine a limitation computation, looking at what basket each item of income is earned. So we'll take our foreign source items and we will further put them in the baskets like general limitation income, passive income, guilty, which I will talk about in the next video. As always, if you would like to receive updates on new videos I publish based on international topics, ASC 740, or even financial literacy, please feel free to subscribe. If you also find that these videos are very helpful, I'd appreciate you sharing to others who are in need.